Good morning. Today I want to discuss uh, 10 things I wish I knew before I started my weight loss. And I have addressed this before, but I did it with five things and uh, I wanted to incorporate other things that I forgot in my first video. Uh, anyway, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jessica and I engage in conversations about weight loss, weight related disease education, and how to achieve weight loss in an affordable way that honors our way of living. So let's get back to the subject at hand, 10 things that I wish I knew before my weight loss journey. Number 10 it would take longer than I envisioned it would. So when I was 45, I thought it would take me about two years to be in uh, about, um, you know, I, what I wished was, you know, between 200 pounds, I, I, I was 170, but as I got closer to 200, um, I was seeing results uh, and that took me actually longer three, four years, and I continued to lose weight uh, because I decided that I wanted to be on, uh, according to what the, you know, the standard BMI uh, is, my personal choice, of course. I think that as you go through this journey, you just tend to go through the journey. Uh, number nine, uh, weight loss is a series of failures and bad days. Um, the moral of the story here is that if you have more good days than bads, you are winning. There will be months that the scale's not moving because you are having a series of bad days. I'm actually going through <laughs> similar this, uh, this month. Um, and what the name of the game here is to get up from that and actually continue to engage in your weight loss. The number eight, deeper issues out of the root of the problem. So when I engaged in therapy, while I was talking and struggling through these uh, topics in terms of like my weight loss, um, I on my personal journey, I didn't get to be 170, maybe more actually, uh, because I was uh, just overeating. I was actually doing uh, B-I-N-G-E, and so I had to address my emotional um, health before, or rather, this in the same manner that I was actually doing my calorie counting and I was involved in movement uh, because uh, we, it, it would never really goes away the fact that you want to deal with your emotional needs through food. Number seven, consistency does not mean perfection. You don't have to be perfect in order for you to be consistent. Just getting up every day and doing something that is health promoting it sometimes is enough and you should just keep going <laughs> number six the further you go the harder it is uh, to get a uh, smaller results for example I am right now between 175, 180, um, and the closer I get to that 160, which is my goal weight, uh, between 155, 160, the harder it is to actually shed those pounds because, you know, I personally, I want to preserve a lot of my muscle and my bone density. Why? Because I'm an older woman. I am 50 years old and I have to focus more on preservation of muscle, weight, fat loss, and bone density uh, preservation. Number five, adjustment and readjustment of calories must happen. Absolutely, folks, we have to 
continue to reevaluate what we're doing during the week. Not necessarily does it have to be every week, but it could be on the three months or uh, three, uh, six months, but we do have to reevaluate because what took us from, what took me from 270 to 250 is not the same what took me from 250 to 200 pounds. So you, constant reevaluation, maybe lowering your calories a little bit, not to the extent you would think, just FYI, you know, 100, maybe 150 calories should be enough to get you to the next level. Number four, sometimes the scale won't move no matter what you do. That is just our bodies compensating and no matter what you do, no matter that you continue, it just won't move. That is a, that is a, a plateau. You could you could reevaluate your calories because sometimes we do think that we're eating a, a, an amount of calories, but we're actually not. We're eating more, um, but they do happen. So therefore, you have to just ride the wave, ride the wave, and have faith because having faith is key here because you will you will be on a plateau and it will happen so therefore this is the reason why slow weight is always the goal the goal because you there is an amount of non control here that you have that you have to just you know let the gods decide <laughs> but anyway number uh, three i think we're at number three you will always uh, learn something new even when you are doing and when you think you know everything you still have to learn i losing 100 pounds i'm still learning i'm learning little tidbits to continue to lose weight or tweak my uh, calories or tweak my movement but it is always learning and learning opportunities number two that exercise is going to be a part of your life for the rest of your life. We're going to have to lean into that because we are moving less and less and less and less and our bodies actually are designed to move, to engage in, in some sort of walking, dancing movement. We have to move. Weight lifting is would be my is my choice or my preferred because I like it and it promotes muscle preservation and growth even at 50. Um, but you could choose anything. Walking is the unsung hero of exercise. <laughs> Number one and my the most <laughs> the key is that the life that I was holding on to at 270, 270 pounds has nothing on the life that I have he, right now being 100 pounds lighter. Why? Because I can travel, I can breathe, I can lean into uncomfortable, my heart rate can go up a little bit uh, high and I can just lean into it. I had to learn basic skills of coping, basic skills of how to feed my body without overfeeding it. I had to also learn how to deal with my emotions, cry, uh, understand that I'm not in control of everything uh, and that this is a journey that health is the key because you can have all the money in the world but if you don't have health you have absolutely nothing so i hope you enjoyed this um this list and i will see you on thursday have a good one